Welcome to this year's journey with the Uganda Matters. Last year, we brought you their story through Reverend Father Joseph Mukasa Muwonge at the Uganda Matters Basilica in Namgongo. In this edition, we take you deeper into the story of the Munyonyo Matters Shrine. most welcome to Monyonyo Matters Shrine. Let's go in and I talk to you about our three lovely matters. Bordered by Lake Victoria to the south, Bulingugwe Island to the southeast, Gava to the east, Salama to the northeast, Buziga to the north, Machindie to the northwest and Luwoa to the west, Munyonyo is found southeast of Uganda's capital, Kampala. Munyonyo is one of the six spots where the Uganda martyrs were killed, together with Old Kampala, Nachivuo, Chamula, Mengo, and Namgongo. <laughs> It was the place where they were sentenced and imprisoned before being taken for execution in Namugongo. Where we are is the place where the matters, where our matters started their journey from. It's on this very land where the king made a fateful decision to put all his Christian pages to death. After he had speared Denis Sebugwao, he came this side held a court, called upon his Christian pages, asked them whether they were willing to continue with Christianity or to denounce it. He told them that those who are willing to continue with Christ, to denounce Christianity, you are my good subjects, you stay on my right, and those who say you want to be Christians forever, you go to my left. Charles Ranga, the leader of the Christians, held the hand of Chistom To who was the youngest and went to the left, meaning that he was willing to remain a Christian. And so others followed. When the king saw that brave action, he was very disappointed. He thought he had scared them enough. From 15th November 1885 to 27th January 1887, a wide series of executions of the Kabaka's pages were carried out. So, he shortly decided to imprison them here and the following day they had to start their journey to Namgongo to die. And then very early in the morning, Charles, Charles Ranga, the leader, decided to secretly baptize them because he knew as a leader he also and knew the journey they were heading for. So Charles Ranga, the leader, decided to baptize the four who were not baptized. This included Chizitomto, who was the youngest, Mbaga Tuzinde, Mugaga Lubowa, and Javila. I think this picture brings it out. We see Charles Ranga baptizing one of the four. The very next morning, King Mwanga brought his whole court before him and asked the Christians to separate themselves from the rest of the court. He then asked them if they intended to remain Christians. When they said yes with strength and courage, he condemned them all to death at Namgongo, the kingdom's designated place for execution. The picture on the stained glass shows the day of judgment. You see the king seated in the chair, pointing fingers left and right. So he was meaning that those who are willing to denounce Christianity, you are my good subjects, go to my right. And those who say you want to be Christians, go to my left. And so you see Christians who are going to the, to the left, meaning that for them they are willing to stay Christians. Munyonyo Mata Shrine is mostly known as the place of judgment, a place of baptism, and where we have our three matters. This includes 
Deni Sebu Guao, Andrew Kagwa, and Posi Anongondre. The first three Christians to render their lives for Christ's sake after the sentencing were Dennis Sebuguao and Andrew Kagwa, who were killed at Munyonyo, and Ponsia Nongondwe, who was killed at a lonely spot by the side of the road in Chamula near Munyonyo, on the way to Namgongo. Dennis Sebuguao was a page boy in the king's palace, and he was brought in the palace by his mother. It was believed by that time that a mother of twins could heal chicken pox. And by that time, there was an epidemic in the palace of chicken pox. So she was called upon to heal that disease. And when she, she came into the, pol in the palace, Denis Sebuguao was put under the guardianship of Bali Kudembe Mukasa, our Christian martyr, our first Christian martyr. Bali Kudembe taught Denis Sebuguao all the roles done in the interior section of the palace. So he was trained to be the personal attendant to the king. And so during that time, the personal attendant to the king could be related to the current secretary. And his main role was to, to, to know what the king was going to put on, what he was going to eat, and his appointments. Yes. And now, on the day of his fateful death, the king had gone on a hunting expedition. And as he was there, things didn't go on well. He lost the gun which he had inherited from his father, Mutesa. And this gun was golden. And he had gone to hunt a hippopotamus. You know, a hippopotamus cannot easily be caught. So, when the king lost the gun, he was very disappointed because he knew he could not get the hippopotamus. Now, a person who had gone to hunt a hippopotamus came out from the hunting site with only two geese. And when he reached the shores, he, found, he met a fortune teller. And this fortune teller told him that, we knew that you had gone to bring a hippo. How come you've come with two geese? He told him, my gun fell into the waters. Then this fortune teller poisoned the king's minds. He told him that, you know what, King Mwanga? Your father, Mutesa, made a very grave mistake of inviting the missionaries to your kingdom. You know the missionaries came under the reign of Mutesa. So he, told them, he told him that, you know, if your father had not invited these people, all these misfortunes befalling your kingdom would have not been happening. He told him about the kingdom in the palace in Mengo. He told him that, it was struck by lightning simply because of the misfortunes brought in by the missionaries. He also told him about the gun which fell in the waters. He told him that, you know, it's, it's because our, our gods are annoyed. That's why it fell into the waters. At the behind entrance of the palace, he met Denis Sebuguao. Denis Sebuguao had gone to attend catechism classes, but since he was the personal attendant to the king, he knew that he knew the time the king might the king will be coming back so he came to welcome the king from the hunting so he found when the king was already furious the king asked him where are you from he never denied he told him i'm from attending catechism classes and then with all the anger started spearing him so very early in the morning he sent a, an executioner and then beheaded him his body was left for the vultures to eat them. By that time, once you are killed on the orders of the king or, the, or any other big person like a chief, prime minister, you could not be given the right of burial. He intercedes for poets and musicians because he was very creative. He was very wise. After attending catechism, he could compose songs and to make it easier to catechize others so it it could be easy for him to teach others through songs so that's why he intercedes for musicians and poets
Andrew Kagwa was a Mnyoro from Bunyoro Kingdom and he came into Buganda Kingdom as a result of raid. Before, during that time, these kingdoms, Bunyoro and Buganda, were enemies. Bunyoro could come to Buganda, raid out youths, because you know when you remove youths, the kingdom becomes weak, and take them to Bunyoro. Likewise, Buganda used to go to Bunyoro, raid out youths and bring them, or sell them to the Arabs, because slave trade by that time had started. So that's how Andrew Kagwa came into Buganda. And when he came into Buganda Kingdom, he impressed the king. He was a good drummer. He could drum well. That's why the king referred to him as his American drumist. He could sing and he could dance. So he impressed King Mutesa so much. And that's why he was retained in the palace. Otherwise, he was supposed to be sold off to the Arabs. And when he was retained in the palace, he stayed together with the prince now, Mwanga, who later became the king. And now after Mwanga, after Mutesa died, because Mutesa lived for a very short time, Mwanga became the king. And you know these people were always together, Mwanga and Andrew Kagwa. So they became friends, they used to share together. Even one day they were sent to Zanzibar to teach them how to drum, you know privileges in the palace, eh? even that time they existed. Can, you can imagine being sent to Zanzibar to learn how to drum. And as they were there, Andrew Kagwa emerged the best. So the king loved Andrew Kagwa so much because he was very bright and intelligent. King Mwanga favored Andrew Kagwa so much. He gave him the best positions in the palace, like he was the head of the Bagoa club, a big position in the palace. So all the favors which were given to Andrew Kagwa left the prime minister insecure, saying that this Munyoro man will one day take my position of the prime minister. Because even the secrets were shared sometimes to Andrew Kagwa, not to the prime minister. So all this left him afraid. So now on the day of judgment, when King Mwanga judged and passed on his judgment to the to the to his Christian pages, Andrew Kagwa was not judged. Andrew Kagwa was not in the palace by the time of judgment, and the king got to know about it, but he never sent his men to get him because he was his good friend, and he never wanted him to, to be killed. But when this fell into the ears of the prime minister, started asking the king why was Andrew Kagwa left out, because he was a Christian and more so a catechist, meaning that religion was going to continue spreading if he was not killed. But the, but the king told him, excuse me, I cannot kill my American drumist. Of course, that was a false excuse. The, the real excuse was he never wanted to kill a friend. Uh, but the prime minister didn't see it. He continued pursuing, pursuing his mission of killing Andrew Kagwa. Uh, and when he saw that the king was not accepting to kill Andrew Kagwa, he told him that if you are not ready to kill Andrew Kagwa, I'm going to connive with your enemies and overthrow your kingdom. You understand people with power. King Mwanga favored Andrew Kagwa so much. He gave him the best positions in the palace, like he was the head of the Bagoa club, a big position in the palace. So all the favors which were given to Andrew Kagwa left the prime minister insecure, saying that this Munyoro man will one day take my position of the prime minister. Because even the secrets were shared sometimes to Andrew Kagwa, not to the prime minister. So all this left him afraid. So now on the day of judgment, when King Mwanga judged and passed on his judgment to, the, to, the, to his Christian pages, Andrew Kagwa was not judged. Andrew Kagwa was not in the palace by the time of judgment and the king got to know about it but he never sent his men to get him because he was his good friend and he never wanted him to, to be killed. But when this fell into the ears of the prime minister, started asking the king why was Andrew Kagwa left out 
because he was a Christian and more so a catechist, meaning that religion was going to continue spreading if he was not killed. But the, but the king told him, excuse me, I cannot kill my American dramist. Of course, that was a false excuse. The, the real excuse was he never wanted to kill a friend. Uh, but the prime minister didn't see it. He continued pursuing, pursuing his mission of killing Andrew Kagwa. Uh, and when he saw that the king was not accepting to kill Andrew Kagwa, he told him that if you are not ready to kill Andrew Kagwa, I'm going to connive with your enemies and overthrow your kingdom. You understand people with power. So that way, that's when the king accepted to kill Andrew Kagwa. It was around evening time when other matters had started their journey to Namgongo. Andrew Kagwa got to know about everything. He was given, by that time he had he also his place in the palace, like a home. He came waiting for his time, full, he was in full meditation, praying, waiting for his time. Since other, since his other Christians had died, how, how, were willing to die for, for faith, he was also like, I'm also ready to die for my faith. So the, the Prime Minister sent his men to collect to get Andrew Kagwa. He never gave them hard time. Very willing, he went to the Prime Minister. And the Prime Minister started interrogating him, of which most of the interrogations were mocking. But he told him, excuse me, I don't fear you, and I'm ready to meet my father in heaven. So the Prime Minister told his men, if I have my dinner, bring me the hand of Andrew Kagwa. That's why you see on his, on his grotto, the, the arm is off. Yes. So after tying him on a tree, there was a tree, they tied him, they cut off the arm and took it to the prime minister, came back and cut it and cut him into pieces. The prime minister told him to, to take him the arm because he knew that the, since the king loved him so much, he could change his mind. But at least if the arm is off, he will be on the journey of what? Of death, because by that time there was no effective medication. Yes. So after he was cut into pieces, and after four days, the king left this palace after they had renovated Mengo. And when the friends of Andrew Kagwa got to know about it, came still in fear, got the remains which were there, came and buried them where the, the grave is. Yes. Andrew Kagwa intercedes for catechists because he was a catechist and also for teachers because once you're a catechist, you are also a teacher. And also for people in the marriage institution because it was him and Matia Mluma who were first married, who were first officially married in church, in fact, in Africa. Yes. Posia Nongondwe was a guard in the king's palace and sometimes he could be sent out by the king to collect taxes and the, source of, and the sources of tax by that time were cows and harvests. So Posia Nongondwe was killed in the afternoon of the 26th of May 1886. That's what, when, the, when our matters started their journey to Namgongo, they reached a place by that time called Takajungwe, Takajungwe, which is currently known as Chamla, and that's where they waited the chief executioner Mukajanga from. When Mukajanga spotted out Posiano Ngondwe, he started falsely accusing him of having stolen his bull. But Posiano Ngondwe told him, excuse me, I'm not going to die because I stole your bull. I'm going to die because I've accepted to die for Christ my Savior. You know, Posi Anongonde, since he was sent out sometimes to collect taxes, he went to the house of Mukajanga and got a bull, not knowing that Mukajanga was a chief. So Mukajanga got annoyed 
and that's why he spotted out Posi Anongonde at the point of Chamula. But he was innocent. He didn't know that Mukajanga was the chief. Yes. So Posi Ano told them that I'm even willing to die from here. Kill me. Even if I go to Namgongo, I'll die. Even if I stay from, I'll die from here. I'll still die for my Christ. So you kill me from here. They killed him because they, he was very strong muscled and fearful and he, uh, and he could cause chaos. So they decided to kill him from there. Yes. After they had killed Posi and Ongondwe, all the martyrs, Catholics and Anglicans, started and prayed, prayed the, our father prayer. And we are told that the faith and strength, courage, they got from that time was overwhelming that pushed them up to Namgongo. Even if, because Namgongo means Mugongo. So by that time they reached, they were being pulled on their backs because they could not be, they could not walk. But still they showed a lot of energy and courage. They never gave up, went on singing up to Namgongo. Posi Anongondre intercedes for all the law enforcement agents like police, soldiers, army. The Munyonyo Martyr Shrine is now a thanksgiving monument of their martyrdom. The official groundbreaking ceremony for the construction of the shrine that stands today took place on 3rd May 2015 and was officiated by the then Popo Nuncio to Uganda, Michael August Bloom and Cardinal Emmanuel Wamala. 1964, sorry. So that cornerstone you see originated from the tomb of St. Francis of Assisi and was blessed and placed here by Pope Francis. You know, this church was built in the year of mercy. This is 20, 20, 2015 to 2016. Eh? So this brick you see originated from the Popo Basilica of St. Peter the Vatican. This brick was used to close the holy door by Pope John Paul, by Pope St. John Paul, who is now a saint eh? of the Great Jubilee year of 2000, eh? and it was removed by Pope Francis. So, to open Jubilee, Jubilee year of mercy 2015 to 2016. To This tree is called a Mwaf tree. It existed by the time when our martyrs were martyred. And we are told that our future martyrs might have started their journey from here. So if it was a person, it could be telling us, and Kampala Capital City Authority confirms that it's the oldest tree in Kampala. This monument tells us what happened. Shows us that the journey of the Ugandan martyrs started from here. We see the first and last men. Those were the killers holding, spe holding pangas, spears and swords. It shows that those were the killers. And we also see one of the men holding a Bible and another one holding a rosary. The one holding a rosary is representing the Catholics and the one holding the Bible is representing Anglicans. And Charles Ranga will repre represents the Catholics because he was the head of the Catholics. And then Mubia Azara for the Anglicans because he was the head of the Anglicans. And the most important reason of this monument, you see the Catholic holding the back of the Anglican. It shows that these people were one, although different religions, because they had decided to die for one Christ. They went on encouraging themselves as they were on the way 
tuna mgongo not catholics to catholics only but catholics to anglicans and anglicans to catholics because they are dying for one christ christ who is non divided about that spot of chamula previously known as takajungwe when posi anongonde was martyred and blood started splickering everywhere these people decided to pray our father and we are told that the courage the power the spirit was overwhelming that took them up to namgongo they never gave up next we can go to then to andrew kagwa there was a tree they tied him on a tree cut off the arm and took it to the prime minister came and continued cutting him into pieces We are heading to the grave of Andrew Kagwa where he was buried after four days by his friends. This is where Andrew Kagwa was buried after four days of his martyrdom. His friends came in fear, got the remains which were still there, brought them and buried him here. of Ludico what when you cannot walk, walk but being dragged on the back but happy singing praying to me i think it was god's work in these people and i think they were inspired by the holy spirit even the i think somehow the foot the this execution reached an extent and said that it's, it's indeed god with these people because we see mukajanga dying a christian and king mwanga dying also a Christian. Truly, it was God's work. So we are heading to the church. One of the significant reasons why this place of Monyonyo is known is because of baptism. We see Charles Ranga baptizing one of the four. This included Chizito Muto, who was the youngest, Mbaga Tuzinde, Mugaga Luwa, and Javida. Before they started their journey to Namgongo, and he did it secretly. People all over the world come to Monyonyo Matters Shrine and also Namgongo to pray through their Ghanaian matters and they also come with their testimonies 
these matters, our lovely matters, have done for them. They will intercede for us. If you have faith and you truly pray through them, they do what you ask for. Always feel free to come to Uganda, to, our, to, to this place, to have your personal prayers. We are going to Denis Sebugwao, who was speared by the king. And later on, very early in the morning, beheaded by an executioner. He's not here at the shrine, but near the roadside. Because from, for him, he was killed when he had gone to meet the king. He, for him, he was killed alone. In fact, that's what we should say. This place where we are was a palace. And in fact, where Denis Sebugwao was killed from is also a palace, was the behind part of the palace. That's where the king used to pass to come to the main palace. So we are heading to Denis Sebugwao martyrdom spot, where Denis Sebugwao was martyred from. When they were constructing this road, the church asked the government to help put this floor over to connect the people to the church. Yeah. You are most welcome to the martyrdom spot of Denis Sebugwao. Please come in and we share the story of Denis Sebugwao. Now, where Mother Mary is, that's where the altar. And then this one is where the congregation sits. Yes. And the other side, where you see the growth of Denis Sebugwao, is where he was murdered from. We always have mass at 10, Latin mass at 10 a.m. in the morning on Sunday. And also, we have literates. People with different groups can come for literates. We don't charge any fee, but maybe if you want to donate to the church, that's when you can bring in your what? Your money. But we don't charge. We don't have a specific fee. This is the exact spot where Denis Sebugwao was martyred from. On the 25th of May, he was speared by the king many times and very early in the morning, the king sent an executioner who beheaded him and his body remains were not buried were left here for the vultures to eat them This is St. Ponciano Subparish Church is under Munyonyo Matas Shrine Parish and St. Ponciano was murdered right just opposite here and we see Ponciano Ngondwe holding a spear showing his work as a guard in the palace and the back growth showing that by that time there were no fabrics people used to cover their bodies by back clothes now i invite you to go to the martyrdom spot of posianongondwe this is the exact spot where posianongondwe was killed as they were heading their journey to Namgong. He, he was killed here because the chief executioner Mukajanga spotted him out, accusing him for having stolen his bull, which was not true because for him he went to his home not knowing that he was a chief. He was just collecting taxes. And by that time, the sources of taxes were harvests and cattle. Thank you for following the history of our Ugandan matters. Come 
Always come, this is your home. Always pray through the Ugandan matters. The place is always open from 9 to 5 p.m. Thank you so much. Say you.